Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We are going to talk about unit vectors in R3 in this video, but first we'll do a little quick review of scalar multiplication, talking about it in the context of 3D space. So let's say we have some vector v here, that's 3 comma 1 comma 2. Scalar multiplication, if you remember this from trigonometry or pre-calculus or something, is just multiplying a vector by a real number. So one easy example would be to figure out, you know, what is 2 times vector v? For scalar multiplication, we simply take that scalar, that real number we're multiplying the vector by, and we distribute that multiplication to each component of the vector. So multiplying each component of v by 2, we get that 2 times vector v is 6, 2, 4. It's pretty easy, right? Thinking geometrically about what scalar multiplication does, let's figure out the magnitude, maybe, of vector v. We did this in one of our previous videos talking about the magnitude of vector. In other words, its length. Using the formula for magnitude of a vector, remember we'll square each component we'll add them all up, and then we'll take the square root, right? So for vector v here, we'll get the square root of 3 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared, which ends up being, if you figured out, the square root of 14. If we look at the magnitude, the length of 2 times vector v, so the length of the vector 6, 2, 4, we'll do the same calculations for magnitude of the vector, and the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared, we actually get the square root of 56, but that reduces to actually two times the square root of 14 after we do a little simplifying of the root. So we see that we get double the length that we got from vector v when we multiplied by a scalar of 2. So you may have already had this intuition from the beginning, but what scalar multiplication does is it gives us a vector that is parallel to the original vector. It's just scaling the length of that vector. So in this case, multiplication by 2 just gave us a vector that was twice as long as the original that points in the same direction as the original vector v. Let's do a few quick examples and interpret these. So for the first one here, 4 times vector v, we would simply multiply each component of vector v by 4, giving us the vector 12, 4, 8. We can describe this vector as pointing in the same direction as vector v, but it is, you can see, four times as long, I think. For the one beside it here, negative one times vector v, distributing multiplication by negative one into each component is going to give us negative three, negative one, negative two. Now we said that we're supposed to get a vector that's parallel to the original vector, so let's think about what multiplication by negative one would do to a vector. Multiplication by 1 wouldn't change the length of a vector, right? In fact, if you calculate the length of this new vector, you'll see that you get the exact same square root 14 value we got earlier in the video for the magnitude of this vector v. The negative in the multiplication is actually changing the signs of all the components here, right? So what this actually means is that this vector actually points in the exact opposite direction of vector v. It's still parallel, to vector v in 3D space, but they actually point in exact opposite directions, so there's 180 degrees between them, if that makes sense. For this next one down below, negative 3 times vector v. So if we distribute the negative 3, that'll give us the vector negative 9, negative 3, negative 6. Since the multiplication is by negative 3, this multiplication gives us a vector that is not only three times as long, but it also points in the opposite direction of v because of the negative multiplication there. For our last example here, zero times vector v, of course we can figure out without too much difficulty that multiplying any vector by zero will give us a vector with zero for every component. We actually call this kind of vector where there's zero in every component, we call this a zero vector. The zero vector is, is simple, but it's a little strange since it's a vector that literally goes nowhere. It doesn't technically have a specific direction, so we won't spend too much time thinking about whether this is parallel to the original vector v, maybe. This one may be so simple that we don't really need to analyze it too much, I think. Moving on to unit vectors. A unit vector is simply a name we give to any vector that is one unit long. So for a unit vector, its magnitude is equal to one. Here's some easy examples that might come to mind for a unit vector, if you were trying to imagine some. This first one, the vector 100, we can tell by looking at it 
that it's a vector that points one unit in the positive x direction only. The next one on the list, 0, 1, 0, is one unit long in the positive y direction. And the last one, 0, 0, 1, it points up one unit in the z direction. If we want to specify that something is a unit vector, then we have what's called a hat notation for vectors. So normally to denote that something is a vector, we use the arrow notation above the v when we say v for vector. When we see this notation, we know v is a vector, but we don't know really the length of vector v. It might have magnitude 1, it probably has some other magnitude, but it could have magnitude 1. But by placing this pointy hat notation above the v for a vector v, this is giving us extra information. It's telling us that not only is v a vector, but we also know right off the bat just by looking at that notation that it's one unit long. So let's go back to our list of easy unit vectors we just looked at. These are really the simplest unit vectors in R3 and 3D space. It's easy to see just by looking at their components that they're one unit long, and they're all parallel to one of our coordinate axes. So we actually call these our standard unit vectors in R3. So our first one, which we've drawn here that points exactly one unit in the positive x direction, 1, 0, 0. This vector has a special name. We actually call it i hat. So i hat is the, the special unit vector, 1, 0, 0. And again, that hat notation just reminding us that it's a unit vector. It's one unit long. Another standard unit vector is the one that points in the positive y direction, one unit, as we've drawn here. This is the vector again, 0, 1, 0. And we give it a special name called j hat. So j hat is the vector 0, 1, 0. And again, that hat notation telling us, hey, remember, this is a unit vector. Our final special unit vector would point one unit in the positive z direction, just like here. This is 0, 0, 1. And you might be able to guess its name based on the previous two standard unit vectors. We call this one k hat. We're just going alphabetically here, i, j, k. So this is k hat is the vector 0, 0, 1. If we put them all up here together, so you can see all three of our special unit vectors, i hat, j hat, and k hat. They're all parallel to the coordinate axes and they're all mutually orthogonal, meaning that each of these is perpendicular to the other two. Remember that orthogonal is just our vector word for perpendicular. These standard unit vectors actually give us another way to write vectors. We've been using the bracket notation to write vectors in this video series so far, but if we look at a vector like 2, negative 4, 1 in bracket notation, we can also write it as what we call a linear combination of the standard unit vectors. Representing each component in a list of terms, we can write this as 2 times i hat minus 4 times j hat plus k hat. Similarly, our vector down here, vector w, we have is 3, 0, negative 5, written in bracket notation. We can write this as a combination of standard unit vectors in our unit vector notation as 3 times i hat minus 5 times k hat. You'll notice that this one has no j hat term because the y component of vector w is actually 0 there. So this is just another way to write vectors not using the bracket notation. It's very common in a calculus course that you'll see both of these interchangeably quite often. We can have other unit vectors besides these standard unit vectors, i hat, j hat, and k hat. Let's say we want a unit vector and we want it to point in a particular direction. So we'll say I want a unit vector that points in the same direction as my vector v here. I think we can probably tell by looking at the sketch of my vector v that it's longer than one unit. So if we picture what we're going for here, our unit vector v hat will actually point in the same direction, but it's going to be much shorter than my long vector v here. Uh, just for the sake of explaining this easily, let's say that the length of vector v is 5 units, just as a for instance. So if the length of v was 5 units, this is the magnitude of v, right? The length of vector v is 5. So how would we figure out what v hat is? And by v hat, here we mean the vector that points in the direction of v with magnitude equal to just one unit. Well, if vector v has magnitude five, then it's five times longer than we want it to be, right? So how do I fix that? Well, I could simply divide vector v by five, in other words, divide it by its own length in order to get a unit vector that points in that direction. So that'll be our process. Whenever we want a unit vector that points in the direction of some other vector, we will simply divide that vector 
by its own magnitude. So you can see here we know that v hat, the unit vector in the direction of v, is just going to be vector v itself divided by its own magnitude or its own length. Let's go ahead and work a couple of examples of finding unit vectors in particular directions to close out the video here. So we're given two vectors. We're given that vector v is 3, 12, negative 4, and vector w is 4, negative 2, 1. And this is asking us to find v hat and w hat. So remember, v hat is a vector in the direction of v, but it is one unit long, and w hat is a unit vector in the direction of w. So v hat here, we know we've got it down here, is going to be our vector v divided by its own magnitude, right? So we're going to think of taking the vector 3, 12, negative 4, and dividing it by its length. Well, the way we find the length or the magnitude, remember, is to take the square root of all of these things squared and then add it up, right? So the square root of 3 squared plus 12 squared plus negative 4 squared. Okay, so in this one that will give us then 3, 12, negative 4, divided by the square root of 9 plus 144 plus 16. And 9 plus 144 plus 16 just happens to be a nice round number, it turns out. This is actually going to be the square root of 169, and that is actually 13. So we actually have the vector 3, 12, negative 4, divided by 13, or rather we can go ahead and write that as the vector 3 over 13, 12 over 13, and negative 4 over 13. So this divide by 13 is like scalar multiplication, right? What we're actually, looks like we're doing is actually multiplying by 1 over 13, since we're dividing by 13. So this is a unit vector, this is v hat, you can actually, if you want to, you can you know, find the length of this vector and double check that it has length 1, has magnitude 1, and it points exactly in the same direction as our vector v does here. All right, let's go ahead and find w hat. So w hat is obviously going to be a vector w divided by its own magnitude, its own length. So vector w in this case then is 4, negative 2, 1, and we're going to divide that vector by its length. So remember, we'll take the square root and then we will square and add up all these components of w. So 4 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 1 squared. And we'll take the square root of all of that. So we'll have the vector 4, negative 2, 1, divided by the square root of 16 plus 4 plus 1. And so this part down here is actually going to be the square root of 21. So we'll actually get then the vector 4 over root 21, comma negative 2 over root 21, and 1 over root 21. Now if we don't care about rationalizing denominators, we can go ahead and leave that. If we really want to, we could go ahead and rationalize denominator. We could go ahead and say 4 root 21 over 21, negative 2 root 21 over 21, and root 21 over 21 if we prefer.